most, or not most, but a big po portion of the black community doesn't feel any ownership over this country for a variety yeah. of reasons, right? And I think that's a big problem. There's a, there's a quote from some shitty movie, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. The guy mm. says, uh, it's a super white movie. You probably haven't seen it. Uh, and if you have it, <laughs> don't go watch it because it's stupid. Uh, I think it won an Oscar, though. But <clears throat> the guy says, uh, we accept the love we think we deserve. Right. Mm. And I think there's a big problem in the black community about not feeling like they uh, uh, had like they have ownership over themselves or their 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 own existence inside of this country and part of this country. Right. Like well, that, that patriotism, I guess. Because black America has been a part of. And let me be clear when I say this, this isn't like a um, like, you know, a harsh truth does not mean that I'm attempting to paint myself as a victim. Mm. Cause the reality is this is my fucking country. Like yep. I, you know, me and my elders built this shit. Now me, you know, I've generated a million dollars. So it's like, it's, a, it's also that, right? Mm. But when I'm saying this, there's a harsh reality that comes along with it. Black people in America have been a part, and I don't mean just people that are like 30 years old. I mean, collectively. Yeah, yeah. We have been a part of the longest running social experiment in world history. And that's like fucked up. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Whether it's economics and people will say like, well, slavery was over however long ago. And it's contradictory because none of my Jewish homies are ever like, well, the Holocaust was over however many years yeah, ago. No like, sure. Yeah, no yeah. shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so like, I'm saying this because like, I, I, I like to show people those contradictions. If you have a group of people that were, and not all, now let's be clear too. A lot of what we're calling African-Americans our lineage was already here. Indigenous people, mm -hmm. like, again, Choctaw, Pawnee, yep. Iroquois, uh, uh, whatever, Washita, whatever. Like, those, they're literally, those people were grouped together at one point in mm -hmm. American history. My point is, if some of those people and their lineage were, or their elders and ancestors were brought here, forced to work, then sanctioned by the state. I don't just mean, like, every single white person running around owned humans. That's not how it went. But at the same time, it was sanctioned by the state the government. Yeah. And then in the process of all of this, you consistently lie to a group of people. You say, hey, emancipation happens. We're going to give everybody 40 acres and a mule because you guys kind of didn't have anything. Then you renege on that. You don't give that community that. Then you go into slave codes, black codes, Jim Crow, segregation, so forth and so on. So then when you look at that and you go, shit, well, then, you know, you have people saying like, well, why can't you guys get it together? It's not that black people can't get it together. It's that you got to acknowledge that this shit wasn't just like slavery, like a hundred to however many hundred years ago, you know, mm -hmm. and then there was systemic things put in place to target communities. And we're going back to the conversation of gun control. Yeah, that's like the biggest one. Oh, like, the, Mulford, like the a, Mulford Act. People have people don't know shit about that. I don't know why that whole the Mulford Act, which banned open carry uh, across the country. The only reason it came to be is because. Uh, 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 Black Panthers started open carrying firearms. That's the only reason that it exists. That that, but see, here's the twist. When you go even further back, mm. like there was times in like North Carolina, they cha they changed their state constitution in North Carolina. Mm. It was, and I'm paraphrasing. You know, I'm talking about way before the 1960s. Like we're talking about, like the slave codes was like Louisiana Purchase time. Right. 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 So like, you had a group of people that said, hey. All able-bodied men can own firearms. And then, like, the state of North Carolina scratched that out and was like, oh, all able-bodied white men. Now, does that mean, like, every white dude that's alive right now was responsible for that shit? No. But it's an ugly stain on our flag, and we got to mm -hmm. acknowledge that. So when you have the trickle up or down effect, whichever way you want to say it, all of that gun control was like, yo, these, these people are subhuman. Mm -hmm. And the <clears throat> Bill of Rights was a human rights document, right? right? So if you have human rights, constitution as the supreme law of the land, and then you have, it's already enumerated in the supreme law of the land, constitution and bill of rights. Then you have states going like, yeah, but like, yo, fuck the black people in regards yeah, to yeah. women. Yeah, and women you know too, what I'm saying? by the like, way. <laughs> we, right, so it's like, we gotta like really, really acknowledge that. So when you tie all of that in, then you have things like um, redlining. There's a great mm -hmm. book called The Color of Law, yep. you know, where it goes into uh, what legislation was actually designed to stop African Americans, right, from from owning land, from living in certain places, from buying things, like actual legislation? Then when you start looking at that history in full, then you don't even have to like the leftists will try to throw this fake critical race theory at you, but yeah. you you're already well equipped because you understand like 
Nah, that's a part of this American history. Yeah. That's a part of it. Mm-hmm. And so you're not shy from it. And you, 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 no one can be, it can't be weaponized against a group of people on either so-called side. But with all of these things happening, then to say to a group of people, well, just get over it. And you still, the, the state, the government, which is the problem, especially in the black community, mm-hmm. When that gr- group of people has not only not acknowledged that and has not done anything to make that whole, then people are saying like, yo, just get over it. It's, it's like a slap in the face. Anybody that does any serious history of our nation, where we live and I love, if I had to re-up on America every year, fuck you. I'm re-upping on yeah. America every fucking year. We got Wi-Fi and shit, bridges. Our infrastructure is a little bit shitty lately. Yeah, well. But if I have to compare that to like, you know, I like the people in Jamaica, but their infrastructure is shit. So my point in saying this is, as a as an American, as a melanated being, when you start paying attention to our actual history and having legitimate conversations about it, you you can't help to go like, nah, you you can't you can't just say, you know, well, just forget about that past, and you right. can't pretend like that shit doesn't have implications for now. And that that also doesn't mean like you get to just be like. Oh, shit. My elders had it hard because to be perfectly honest, no black people in America right now have it in no way, shape or form as hard as a a few generations back. Like the 50s. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like they had to have the National Guard take them to school. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a weird and layered and contextual conversation that having the the conversation about why the black community should be armed Mm. and safe and responsible from the state primarily it takes you into all of these places of our nation's history that I think is beautiful to discuss and, and articulate and even challenge and critique, um, you know, people, each other to, you know, steal sharp and steal. Yeah, for sure. It. I mean, the founding fathers were deeply flawed individuals, but I feel like yeah. they wrote a document that's, uh, uh, you know, with a, with some edits has persisted. Uh, uh, I want to ask you about that. How do you process the fact that, uh, a lot of the founding fathers owned slaves, but they wrote this document that said all people are created equally. You know what I mean? And, and even yeah. like Thomas Jefferson's on record in the Senate uh, uh, as Secretary of State saying uh, that slavery is an abomination. Like how, do, yep. like, how do you do that? But he owned one of the largest slave plantations in the entire country at the time. Main man wrote the Declaration of Independence yeah. while he owned humans. Like, yeah. what the fuck type of contradiction? But how do you, that? how do you, like, how does, how do you, keep that inside of your head and still understand. Because, look, you, you've you said it yourself. These documents are pretty fucking good, right? Yeah. As far as yeah. human beings go, writing government documents, that's pretty much the best one out. So yeah. I, it's, I, it's, how do you... How do you there's, there's two things. One, there's one document that's better than it, and they took from it. It's the um, 40, excuse me, 42 Laws of Mayat that came from Kemetic ideology, or what we now call Egypt. Um, that's why it's like, they, they was like, Benjamin Franklin was in Egypt like fucking all of the time. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so is, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 the guy that made the fucking stupid musical about, and, uh, Hamilton. Yeah, yeah. He, he, was over yep. there. he was actually born yep. in Africa. Yep. And so, so that document's dope because it, it, it goes more into individual accountability. I'm talking about shit like, did you defile the water? Like while you were, you know, in that brief story there, and that ideology, when you die, your heart is weighed on the scales of my eye or to balance the scale. Mm-hmm. That's where they get the Libra scales from against the feather of my eye. And if your heart was light because your deeds were pure and you followed the 42 laws of my eye, you would get into, you know, the, the afterlife. Right. Mm-hmm. So that that goes really deep into individual accountability. Like, did you like fucking think a bad thing type shit? So right. from a spiritual and moral space, I think that one's like super dope. But in regards to government ordinance mm-hmm. and limiting government. The fucking Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence are like, it's it's like, it's almost, it's a triangle, it's a pyramid. Yeah. You know, it's a very, which is the strongest shape in like geometry. But the point is, these dudes wrote some shit because they pulled it from all of the, they knew all of the fuck ups of governments previous. But not just that, they knew their own fuck ups currently. Right. Like they, right. they, like I honestly, Jordan Peterson talks about this a lot. He goes, if you if like challenge yourself, yeah. identify something in your life today that you're doing poorly and then make a plan to fix that, whether it's right. how you treat people or how you treat yourself or anything like that. That's a very yep. that's a very smart when I say smart, I mean like the ability to take all the knowledge 
and, and shit you have and put it out of the way and make a moral decision. That's that that's to me, wisdom. that is like true intellect, right? Right. That's that's a higher level of intellect and yeah. wisdom. It's applying the information when applicable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm.